Welcome to our ESPN2 College Football Studios and also a special hello to those of you joining us from ESPN News. A day in college football in which the, the fog that is shrouding the bowl picture lifted just a little bit. First of all, we start in the Big 12 Conference, number 6, Colorado, hosting number 9, Kansas State. Important game for Kansas State, a lot of snow out at Folsom Field in Boulder. And Brian Cavanaugh of the Wildcats picked off here in the second quarter by David Damon Wheeler. One play later, Coy Detmer will sneak it in. They missed both of their extra point conversions, so Colorado leads at halftime by a count of 12-0. No Bill Snyder team has ever beaten Colorado. That may change tonight, but Colorado leading 12-0 at halftime. The upset we were talking about, North Carolina in Charlottesville, where they haven't won since 1981. And this is Antoine Harris picking it off. North Carolina led at that point 17-3, but this one goes 95 yards in the other direction. It was 17-10 Tar Heels. Same score, three minutes left in the game. Tim Sherman on the option. He runs in from seven yards out to tie it at 17. And then with 39 seconds left in dramatic fashion, Rafael Garcia, the game winner from 32 yards out. Virginia wins it by a count of 20 to 17. Has to be a heartbreaking loss to the Tar Heels and coach Mac Brown. And an amazing, amazing statistic, which we'll tell you in just a second. As you look at the Clemson, North Carolina State score, the Tigers win for their fifth consecutive time, become eligible for a bowl berth. They win it 40 to 17. Here's that stat I was talking about. Virginia has picked off passes in 39 consecutive games. During that period, a total of 85 interceptions, 20 different players with picks. An incredible, incredible NCAA mark. Conference USA action today. Scoreless in the first half between Houston and Louisville. That's where Kedrick Sanford, he's at downfield. To Maurice Bryant, 47 yards, he's wide open. Nobody's going to get him. The Cougars led 7-0. 17-10 Houston later on, and it's Sanford again with an 8-yard touchdown run. His second of the day, 24-0 Cougars. With a win today over Louisville, they clinch the conference championship. They look to be well on their way to doing that as they lead 31-0 in the third quarter elsewhere tonight california what a great start they had and they were beginning to fizzle oregon playing tough and winning 24-3 in the third quarter in the big 10 minnesota on top of illinois 14-7 jim wacker of course no longer the minnesota coach he will retire after this season now the game you're watching florida state of course they're trying to stay unbeaten against southern mississippi and earlier today ohio state trying to do the same against indiana a win of course would mean that ohio state would clinch that trip to Rose Bowl in Pasadena for the first time since 1984. Folks, it wasn't easy. Fourth quarter game tied, believe it or not, at 10. But the play of the game, Andy Katzenmoyer strips the ball from Rodgers, and Matt Finkus recovers and rumbles 45 yards to the score that put Ohio State on top, 17-10. And then it was just a matter of time. John Cooper met Bill Mallory on the... 50-yard line, Ohio State wins it 27-17. As I mentioned, they clinched their first Rose Bowl berth since 1984. Florida was looking to run its record to 10-0 today down in Gainesville. The final home game for those outstanding Florida Gator seniors, including quarterback Danny Werfel. Let's look on second quarter. Florida led 14-6, and Werfel doing his thing. He didn't have a great day by his standards, but here he did. 52 yards in stride to Riddell Anthony. Again, not a great game, but it was effective. Gators also did it in other ways. Terry Jackson, he plays offense, defense, and special teams. There he blocked the punt. It's returned for a touchdown by Mike Peterson, Florida up by 20. And then they did it on the ground. Freddie Taylor actually picked up the slack for the Gators offense today. Here he goes from 25 yards out, his third touchdown of the afternoon as the Gators win big by a count of 52-25. The numbers to look there for, of course, Fred Taylor's 139 yards rushing and three touchdowns. They have a week off, Florida does, before that big game against Florida night, Florida State. Coming up at 9 Eastern on ESPN, important game in the SEC is 8-1 Alabama takes on Mississippi State. But when we come back, we'll check in on the status of Lou Holtz. Will he or won't he announce his resignation at Notre Dame? Stay with us here on The Deuce. To test their latest parka, mother Gert Boyle and son Tim head for the mountains. Sportswear, one tough mother. Oh. 
A long time ago, someone said, I'm better than you. The fearless face off. They charge headlong into the crease, into boards, into history. Fiery tempers spill across frozen tundra. Players get faster, more aggressive, less polite. A frenzied dash for a cup where keepers are unconscious. Forwards are psychic and hats are for tricks. Human sacrifice in the name of Lord Stanley. And into center ice, it's carved, I'm better than you and I can prove it. NHL 97, if it's in the game, EA Sports, it's in the game. The Wall Street Journal keeps you on the cutting edge with news and insights that can affect you personally and professionally. Subscribe now and have the journal delivered to your home or office. And with your paid subscription, you'll also receive our free personal finance software to help you make smart decisions. Get 10 weeks of the journal and the software for only $3.80 a week. Call now, 800-327-8400. That's 800-327-8400 for the Wall Street Journal. At the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, welcome back to our ESPN2 College Football Studios. Army, could they run their record to 10-0 against Syracuse? Uh-uh. Donovan McNabb up top there. Big catch for Pal, Paul Pasqualoni's team. It set up this touchdown right here. McNabb pitches to Malcolm Thomas. He runs it in from nine yards out. Syracuse led at that point 21-7. They are now leading 35-10 that game on ESPN. Nebraska at Iowa State. The Huskers rolling and the Cyclones try Troy Davis hoping to keep his Heisman Trophy hopes alive. We go to Ames, Iowa. Troy for Heisman. They know who they want to win this thing, and he had a good day. He gets stuffed here, however, by the Cornhusker defense. Nebraska led 7-0, and later, watch here. Rashawn Jackson, 35-yard touchdown pass from Scott Frost, his second of the day. Nebraska went on to roll 49-14. Amon Green actually out uh, shined Troy Davis with 241 yards, or 14 yards, I should say. But Troy Davis did set an NCAA record for rushing in consecutive years, 3,000. 970. Southwest Louisiana getting bombed by Texas Tech. We talked about the two running backs, Troy Davis. How about Brian Hansbart? He actually had a bigger day. 257 yards today. He's got over 2,000 for the season. He had four touchdowns. He's got 13 uh, on the season. And there's the number on Troy Davis. This would be amazing. These two guys could both finish over 2,000 yards in a single season and not win the Heisman Trophy. Troy Davis knows that feeling. It happened to him last year. Colorado State and Wyoming. A big day for All-American wide receiver Marcus Harris. Watch here. He catches the screen pass from Josh Walworth and gains 19 in the process. He passes former teammate Ryan Yarborough, become the NCAA's all-time receiving yardage leader. Now, the Cowboys actually trailed 24-19 in the fourth quarter. Marquez bring him with a six-yard touchdown run to cap off a 96-yard drive. And Wyoming rallies for a 25-24 win. Cowboys win the WAC Pacific Division because UNLV. How about this? What a shocker this is. UNLV beating San Diego State 44-42. UNLV prior to that game, 1-10, their record. San Jose State and Washington talk about big days for running backs. How about Corey Dillon? This man, remember, he replaced Rashawn Sheehy earlier in the season, set all kinds of records. He set another one today. This touchdown run, 78 yards. He just played a single quarter, and yet he sends it an NCAA record. 222 yards in the first quarter alone, and that's the only record he, or the only quarter he played in today. Unbelievable as Washington wins 53-10. Washington State trailing Stanford. This game now a final. Stanford wins it 33-17. The Cougars' third straight loss to Stanford. Virginia Tech and Miami, important Big East game. Third quarter tied is seven. The touchdown pass from Jim Druckenmiller to Mike Stevie. Tech on top, 14-7. Later. Brian Clement's ankle gets rolled over by a hokey lineman. Clement had to leave the game with a sprained ankle and did not return. Number 21, Virginia Tech, leading number 18, Miami, 21-7. to Notre Dame over Pittsburgh, no surprise there. The final 60-6 to in a big win. But the big controversy, of course, the status of Coach Lou Holtz. What would he do? Well, after the game, he did little to clear up the issue of whether or not he would resign as coach. I'm not saying that, you know, that I will be here next year because I don't know. But uh, the, the controversy and the way it's surrounded me just has overwhelmed me. And all the reports coming out of South Bend uh, indicate that some kind of announcement will be made early next week as to Holtz's future. 
Well, next Saturday here on the Deuce, another college football triple header. It begins at 12.30 Eastern with West Virginia at Virginia Tech. And then at 5.30 is South Carolina against Red Hot Clemson, winners of five straight. And at 8.30, the hat trick, Big Pit Prime on the line as Ohio meets Minnesota. We try to predict the... Without a good window remodeling plan, anybody can get in a little too deep. Before you remodel, plan ahead at your Anderson Window Center store, where we'll guide you through everything, from replacing windows to putting in patio doors. At Anderson Window Centers, we help create all the home you want to come home to. Your Anderson Window Center is Taylor Window and Door Company, 720 Capital Circle Northeast. Chevrolet. The stunning new 97 Luminas are here. Winner of Family Circle's Family Car of the Year and a Consumer Digest Best Buy Award with 41 safety features. Four-wheel anti-lock brakes, dual airbags, daytime running lights, standards, safety and beauty for an unbelievably low price of $16,998. That's right, just $16,998, and we have 50 available. Champion Chevrolet, here's to the winning has a proud heritage and our institutions have had a great deal of success on the field. In the decade of the 90s, the ACC is the only conference to have all nine schools play in postseason bowl games, with Georgia Tech and Florida State winning national championships. Academically, six ACC schools were cited by the CFA for having a better than 70% graduation rate, the most ever by any conference. The Atlantic Coast Conference is committed to athletic and academic excellence. The state of Florida was only 10 years old when Thomas Jefferson's grandson, the city mayor, helped to establish the seminary west of the Suwami. Today, his legacy rests on the oldest continuous site of higher education in Florida. For nearly 150 years, we have sought to preserve the Jeffersonian ideals of public education and citizenship through the world's newest technologies and its oldest traditions, physically, mentally, morally. We are the keepers of the flame at Florida State University. Welcome back to our ESPN2 College Football Studios. Earlier today in Ann Arbor, the Michigan Wolverines hosting number 11 Penn State. Wolverines terrible on special teams. David Macklin has that blocked punt. Ahmad Collins runs it in for the touchdown. Wolverines had a chance to win, but Kim Herring picks it off. They trail at that point, 22-17. Herring's second interception of the day. The Nittley Lions go on to win it, 29-17, to keep uh, uh, their hopes for an Alliance Bowl berth alive. In their last two losses, Michigan has committed 10 turnovers. Tough, tough day for Lloyd Carr. Northwestern against Purdue. Purdue made this game close. They fumbled the ball with two minutes left, and the game tied. Barry Gardner recovers for NU, and then Ben Brian Goins, like he did against Michigan in dramatic fashion. The winning field goal from 32 yards out. Northwestern wins at 27 touchdowns. 27-24, two touchdowns for Darnell Autry, who becomes their all-time scoring leader, and the Cats clinch second place in the Big Ten. Wisconsin gets embarrassed by Iowa down in Iowa City, 31 to nothing, the final there. Arkansas and Tennessee, this one was close. Peyton Manning had to leave the game in the third quarter because of sprained knee, but he came back later on. Watch what happened here. Special teams took over for the Volunteers. Terry Fair on the receiving end of this Matt Wait punt for Arkansas. He'll go down the right sideline. He's got great speed. Nobody's going to catch him. His second 86-yard return for a touchdown this season. The Volunteers go on to win it big, 55-14. Tennessee scores 41 unanswered points in the second half. Number 17, LSU over Mississippi, 39-7. Georgia and Auburn, we updated this score during our uh, Florida State Southern Mississippi game. In four overtimes, Georgia wins it 56-49 on a torn curtsy touchdown run. Vanderbilt and Kentucky, since uh, Bill Curry announced his resignation, the Wildcats have won three states, 25-0 the final there. The Ivy League, Dartmouth and Brown, and Dartmouth looking for an undisputed championship and looking to stay undefeated. They did just that today. Less than 30 seconds left in the game. Dartmouth, 27-24. Brown looking for one last chance. But watch here. Sean Morey drops his pass from Jason McCullough in the end zone. Dartmouth hangs on to win 27-24 to win the Ivy League championship. And in Carm Coase's final game as head coach of Yale, 
He goes out the way he came in a long time ago. They lose to Princeton by a count of 17, but what a distinguished career Carm Koza has had. Elsewhere among undefeated teams, Marshall, the number one team in Division One AA, beats Furman 42-17, and Montana State, number two in Division One AA, a 24-10 winner over Weber State. It is halftime in Tallahassee, Florida State leading the Mississippi, Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles, 23-14. We'll be back with some final thoughts after this. Sal, Joe, there's always a future in Sal. Just think, Joe, you're going to be your own boss. Joe, plastic lasts forever. Joe, let's not call it a pyramid scheme. Emu, Joe, it's the pork of the future. Lots of career opportunities. One car, make it a good one. The Civic Sedan from Honda. Joe, 12 men, one boat. What could be better? Man, that's like a new pair of Nike turf trainers. Yeah, you know, Steve Young works out in the air zoom fly. Oh, can that guy hustle? All right. What do you think? Nobody gets you closer to the game than Foot Locker, where it all begins. You want to play sports at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Get one of these student release forms from your coach or guidance counselor and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in Division I or II. For more information, call toll-free 800-638-3731. Want to play? Know the rules. This message provided by the NCAA. And a reminder for all the scores, check in the ESPN 2's bottom line. Uh, a highlight of note for Seminole fans in basketball. Remember Charlie Ward, the Heisman Trophy winner? Here, he dishes off to John Wallace for the reverse jam. The Knicks beat the Timberwolves today by a count of 82-79. Now tomorrow at 11.30 Eastern, NFL countdown. Boomer and the boys set the table. The NFL's hot ticket, the 9-1 Denver Broncos taking on New England. And can the Packers get by the Dallas Cowboys? All that and Just what does it take to... Fasten your seatbelts. Big Ten Tires is about to take you on a thrilling cross-country ride. Compliments of Kelly Tires. While we realize that your day-to-day -day driving may not be quite as hair-raising, stop by for the right Kelly Tires, and you'll be ready for anything that crosses your path. Well, almost anything. Look for Kelly Tires at Big Ten Tires, where you'll always get a good deal on a great tire. Dodge Country's 96 final clearance sale is going on now. All 96 Neons, Caravans, Grand Caravans, and Conversion Vans will be sold at 1% over dealer invoice. The Hot Dodge Neon, 1% over invoice, and you keep the rebate. The ever-popular Caravan and Grand Caravan, 1% over invoice with savings to $3,500. 96 Conversion Vans, 1% over invoice with savings to $7,700. All 96 models must go. Our 97 model allocation depends on it. So stop and see us, because when they're gone, they're gone has a proud heritage and our institutions have had a great deal of success on the field. In the decade of the 90s, the ACC is the only conference to have all nine schools play in postseason bowl games, with Georgia Tech and Florida State winning national championships. Academically, six ACC schools were cited by the CFA for having a better than 70% graduation rate, the most ever by any conference. The Atlantic Coast Conference is committed to athletic and academic excellence. And welcome back to Tallahassee, everybody, as the Southern Miss Golden Eagles trailing the Florida State Seminoles 23 to 14, but a very interesting first half rod. I think a whole lot closer than a lot of people, including the Seminoles, expected. Well, I think that's right, and I think that Southern Miss has come out and done what they wanted to do. They put a little pressure on early. They ran the slant routes, and Florida State didn't adjust to them until late. And then we saw the defense of Florida State really kind of come on in the second quarter. It started, though, in the very first series with a big turnover that uh, gave a chance for Southern Mississippi to go on top. And there were two other ones after that by a Seminoles team that doesn't cough the ball up that much. Well, you know, Thad uh, Busby is clearly having trouble with his left wrist with the cast on there. He hasn't protected the ball real well. He's thrown a couple of picks already, and he really has to get comfortable and be a little bit better about the ball. Okay, we'll see, I'm sure, some adjustments to be made here as we start this 
second half. First downs were 16 to 5 in favor of Florida State and not a lot of offense that Southern Mississippi could muster except when they benefited from the turnovers. A safety included in the 23 points picked up by the Seminoles. Sherrod Gideon back had one very fine, re a couple of fine returns actually in that first half. Gideon standing back at his own one and he touched that ball. He'll pick it up at the four. And the Seminoles are right there and there's a big start for Florida State. And Sean Key made the hit. Yeah, big start for Florida State, bad start for Southern Miss. First half, it was... Uh, Southern Miss that's jumped out on top, but it's the yardage picked up that's going to be a concern look, by Florida State. Look at the rushing. Minus 12 for Southern Miss. That is so key. They have got to generate some kind of ground game, even though they want to throw the football. And those turnovers for Florida State, that's what they're going to lose, huh? Yeah, that's the three turnovers there, and all three came about with Bad Busby. Two interceptions and one fumble as he was trying to pass. All right, we are underway here in the second half, and the uh, It'll be a first down and 10. The ball is spotted at the seven yard line. Shaw has come in to the backfield along with the ball wear. Roberts, the quarterback, second man deep up to about the 10 yard line. The Seminole defense has granted very little room. Shaw, the carrier that time. Tackle made by Renard Wilson. And Wilson is part of that tag team of defensive ends for Florida State that are so good. And Bull Ware is the other one on the other side of the field. Wilson is on this side. And the two of them are as good as any tandem of defensive ends that you've ever had in college football. And another loss, Rod, a two-yard loss on that. It will be second down and uh, 12 now. Loss of two on that. Ball is sitting right on the five-yard line. Lee Roberts, the quarterback, doesn't look like what he sees out there. And the clock was running down on him. Had no chance to adjust, so he'll take the timeout. Just underway, second half in Tallahassee. If more top mechanics use one motor oil over any other brand in their own cars and trucks, maybe it's time you changed your oil. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. This is Jeff. Hi, it's me. Do you want to meet me at home for lunch? I can't do that right now. I'm in the middle of something. Have you looked in your briefcase yet? You're killing me. I left you something this morning. I'll, I'll be home in 10 minutes. I'm not crazy about this artificial type. Looks like shag carpeting. That don't get <laughs> No big deal. After all, this is American. We play football no matter what. Lizards, floods, tropical storms, I've seen it all. And let me tell you this, if a meteorite hit the earth tomorrow, it just wait for the darn thing to cool off, throw a field in the ashes, run it in for six points, and spike it to the end zone. These are the biggest feet in pro basketball. Shoe size 21. If you think the shoes are hard to fill, imagine what it takes to fill the rest of it. Big more. Well, new cheese tortellini from Chunky puts the bill. It's loaded with giant ring-shaped pasta stuffed with cheese, plus huge chunks of chicken and tons of vegetables. So if you've got a giant appetite to feed, Chunky Cheese Tortellini scores with the big boys. Satisfied? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Camel's Chunky. Soup that eats like a meal. ESPN2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Valvoline Durablend, the number one selling semi-synthetic motor oil, and by Nike. Welcome back, Tallahassee, everybody. Gary Thorne and Rod Gilmore for Mississippi State. How do you move the football? Southern Mississippi, rather. That's the question they face right now. They can't run it, and when they try to throw it, they're getting a lot of pressure. And it Francis will be the lone setback here. Lee Roberts dropping back, looking for that quick slant in, but it'll be incomplete. Overthrown on the far side as Kendrick Lee was cutting in. That's his favorite receiver, but not a lot of room. Well, Gary, remember back in the first quarter, Southern Miss was having a lot of success throwing the slant. Well, what's happened now is that Florida State has adjusted. They're either playing zone or they're having their safety sit in the middle of the field and look for the slant. And that will cut off one of the few offensive weapons that Southern Mississippi has been able to use. If you adjust to that, I guess, you'd take the slant and kind of try and go by the uh, defensive back. And then we start running some other routes. Third down and 12. 
They'll run the fullback draw and uh, a gain of maybe a yard for the junior Harold Shaw. This seminal D, Devin Smith leading the charge, has been pumped all night and they continue to get it done. Yeah, how about Reynard Wilson, number 55? He was all over that play as well. They call him Big Country. Raised on a farm and did a lot of work in a tobacco field. You know, he's a guy that likes gators. <laughs> He'll get the Florida gators in a couple weeks. But when he was a kid, he had brought a three-foot alligator into his mother's fishing fish pond, and he had to go in there after it, and she told him to get rid of it. Well, remember if I need that service to call it, because I won't be doing that, I guarantee you. All right, pick coming from the end zone here, the Mississippi State. A return will be set up. He pieces back at the 40-yard line. Great position. 30, 25, the 20. And there he will not be hauled down. He takes it all the way up to the 15-yard line. Great return by Feaster, 25 yards on the return after a 34-yard kick. Well, he's been a dynamo all night long for Florida State, and he is aggressive with the punt return. When you bring the punts back, you have to attack the defense. That's exactly what he does, bringing up the middle and running hard and taking on shots. He's not a big guy, but he struggles hard for extra yardage. Robert Hammond with a real fine block helping to uh, open him up. Meester is ranked 33rd in the nation in returns. He's had a couple of touchdown returns. And uh, we've got a player down on the field here for the Seminoles. And I can tell who that is. I thought it was number 40, Lamont Green. And I think, yep, that's who it is. Green on the return. Throwing some blocks up front, got taken down. Well, the one thing about Florida State, as you look at Lamont Green down there, their defense has been good all season long, and their special teams have been outstanding. And that's been key for them tonight as Lamont Green gets up, and it's good to see him walking off the field. He's got that ankle tape. We've got a lot of folks who've got tape over all kinds of their parts of their bodies here for both these teams, in fact. Florida State. Suffered some injuries last week and the week before. The Houston game played by Southern Miss last week cost them about five injuries during the game. Three of those players back to play. Well, you know, that's one of the reasons why I don't know about having an extended college football season with a playoff system. And these guys aren't ready to play 14, 15, 16 games. The injury factor is huge in college football late in the season. Yep. And you've got a seminal coach who agrees with you on that. He does not believe in the playoff system. Great field position here. First down and 10. Balls at the 15-yard line. Leslie sends it back deep on the turn. At the 10 inside the 5. Flag is down. Touchdown! What a run by Dunn! But Eric Dunn takes it in, but there is a flag. Yeah, it should come back for holding. I don't know if they caught it or not, but there was holding out on the side where Warren Dunn took it in. Like nope. it's going to be against Southern Miss. And it will be a touchdown. Done on the 15-yard run. Takes it in. We were wondering if they, in fact, would come to him more in the second half. And they start right out doing that. The extra point is up and good. And it is a 29-14 lead. Done now with seven carries, 44 yards, and two touchdowns. control is now standard on all BMWs because we all have places to go.
contact the peak of K2 if a remarkably soft pair of pants were placed there? Would a man tread the lip of a volcano for pants that were pure cotton yet wrinkle-free? Would a man brave the trackless Sahara for pants that were suitable for work and play? A man would, if he were a fool, because he could go to the store and say, yes, I'd like to try on the ultimate pant, new by Hager. Besides, your wife won't let you go to the Sahara anyway. You and I have a lot in common. I look at you, I see myself. Pay too much for auto supplies and you'll feel like one too. At Pep Boys, get $5 back on a pair of quality Sylvania headlights. Pep Boys, everything but gas. Auburn and Alabama get it on in the annual Iron Bowl. Auburn, Alabama, next Saturday at 7.30, only on ESPN. Warwick done with his second touchdown of this game, and Florida State's now up 30-14. Yeah, well, they got a little help. Melvin Pearsall right there, 81, is probably going to get away with the hold. Keep your eye to the right of the screen. There's 81. Look at his left arm. He's got the backside, and watch, he's going to get a takedown right here. He's going to take the player all the way down it doesn't get called and that results in a touchdown and that is not anything that the defense have coordinated for southern mississippi like john thompson is irate that the officials didn't call it a big non-call right there and uh, the touchdown for the seminoles and they are up kickoff coming back deep brandon francis that'll be at the eight yard line 15 going sideways and not very far. Boy, they have been top. Sean Key has, on three separate occasions, had exceptional coverage on kick returns. Well, the special teams are so good here. And that, again, we talked about it earlier. They play frontline players on their special teams, not the backups. And that has made a world of difference for the Seminoles and for... Southern Miss that has had them starting in very bad field position in innumerable occasions in this game. Second possession this half, they started at their own seven the first time. Now they're at the 14-yard line for a first and ten. Tough to do anything there. A. Robertson at quarterback looking for the screen. It was red and an incomplete pass. Well, you know, you cannot run the quick screen when you have man-to-man -man coverage out there. Again, Siobhan Smith moved in. Yeah, uh, Smith and Colsey was out there, too. Three receivers to the left of the screen. Quick drop. You'll see the fast pass right back in there. Smith all over it. His job was simply to run with the receiver. That's what he did. Kevin wow. Smith again there to knock it away. Second down and 10 on the incomplete pass. Eddie Shaw split wide to the left side. And uh, Southern Miss has got to... Uh, Open this one up if they can, because the running game has been virtually non-existent. Harold Shaw, the junior, out of the backfield, hit by Peter Bolwer. Nothing there. You know, that's a big offensive line for Southern Miss. You know, almost everyone on that line is over 300 pounds. But Florida State is so quick up front, they are beating them to the punch. They're getting there a step ahead, moving in directions that the big offensive line for Southern Miss can't handle. And they are not, and have not been able to in this game. And again, deep in their own territory, third and ten. Ball still at the 14-yard line. Where they started from, no game. They will slot it up to the left side. Lee Roberts. The ends came back into the box and uh, thrown incomplete up at the 30-yard line. Couple of receivers in the area. Eddie Shaw, one of them, but really not close to either. Now remember earlier we told you about the slant route, but look what they've done now. You've got a safety hanging here, and they're a little closer on the slant. They will take away the slant routes forcing Southern Miss to go to other routes. You see how the corner sits there? You can't throw the slant. So now, nobody's open there. Nice adjustment by Florida State. Good adjustment. Gabriel out there to do the kicking, and the DP screws run back a couple very nicely. They'll be standing back a near midfield. High kick. Bear kick called for. He hits right at the 50-yard line. We'll take a Southern Miss bounce. And at the uh, 44, the Seminoles will go back to work after a 43-yard punt, leading it 30-14. to 14. Deadly. Do you need fast cash? Look no further. 
C&T Jewelers is on the job offering fast cash for virtually any item of value, from stereo equipment to musical instruments to ultra-fine jewelry. C&T Jewelers pays you the money. Plus, C&T Jewelers has the lowest interest rates in town, guaranteed. That's right, the lowest interest rates, guaranteed. Stop by C&T Jewelers today and get paid fast cash. Bring your merchandise to C&T Jewelers, located next to Winn-Dixie on the corner of Tharp and Old Bainbridge. Introducing FMB Home Line, the convenient home equity line of credit you access with a check. Home Line offers affordable terms, quick approval, tax saving potential. Homeowners who qualify can use cash for any good reason. College, home improvements, a new car. Apply for your FMB Home Line home equity line of credit at any FMB location. We'll be there for all the days in your life. An FMB Bank member FDIC about their ESPN Bud Light Big Monday promo, but since it ain't in my contract, I'll let the cat with the monster truck voice clue you in. Go to a participating Bud Light retailer and pick up an entry form and schedule. Select your weekly Big Monday winners, mail them in, and you're the lucky bum whose entry is drawn and all your picks are correct. You win a free trip to the championship week game of your choice. Otherwise, you get a bunch of ESPN Bud Light merchandise. It ain't bingo, baby. State defense ranked third defensively in points surrendered, 9.6 a game. Going over the strategy that has really worked in this game. The turnovers have given the opportunity to Southern Miss, not the defense. The Seminoles back, first and 10 on the offense. Warwick done in the backfield. Deep drop, swung out to the right side at midfield, 45, and uh, close to the 40-yard line. Mike Adamley, what you got? Well, oh, Gary, out in the pack, 10. California's trying to keep its bull hopes alive, but trailing Oregon here. They pulled within seven, but then the Ducks went back out in front big time. 30 to 17, they now lead after that touchdown pass to Damon Griffin. 30-17, guys. Out of offense on the West Coast. Warwick Dunn making that last reception. It'll be a first to end at 10 as Dunn gained 15. Got Ford moves out there on the blocking assignment to keep the pass alive. Third quarter, 11:23 to go, and the Seminoles trying to put some points on the board. Busby again back, gets the big right. Here's a rollout thrown uh, to the sideline, incomplete. Just dumped that one as he did not have anybody open. Jeff Posey and Quentin Jackson in on the charge. Well, you know. Matt Busby isn't getting knocked around, and one of the goals for Southern Mississippi was to destroy the rhythm and punish the quarterback. They really haven't done that. Now, they were confusing the offensive line early on, but they've gotten away from that lately. Taking the coach out of the game? Well, not really now. Busby has plenty of time to throw, and that man, John Thompson, is trying to come up with another way to get his guys into Busby's face. Busby, who did not play in the game last week, has gone the distance here in this one. A second down and 10. Again, he lost the ball downfield. A lot of contact. Beyond that, it'll be incomplete at about the 15-yard line as Pearsall was there. And another receiver even deeper than that. Well, they were flooding the left side. And this time they came with a little different blitz to get Ty Trahan, number 16, into the play. You'll see there, they're showing blitz. They're showing blitz. They bring it from, watch, right side of your screen. Here comes Trahan right now. They hadn't done that earlier. They brought him from the outside now to put pressure on Busby. There you see it again. A little bit of distraction up front with the cross uh, running of routes by the defensive lineman and Trahan coming from the outside. That's the way they try and shut down a passing game. Third down and 10. Again, Busby throwing long, and that will be incomplete all the way up at the five-yard line for E.G. Green, the intended. Again, good pressure put on as Marshawn Kenny moved in on the quarterback. Well, that was the first time since early in the second quarter we've seen them actually knock Busby around. Twice in that series they hit him. They hadn't done that for a long time, Gary. So the Seminoles are going to have to punt here. Sean Liss in to do the kicking. Kendrick Lee is back. Liss, who averages 43 per kick, 25th in the nation in that department on the season. Trying to uh, put the short boot to this one. Fair catch, call for and made at the 12-yard line. So that's where Southern Miss will take over. Again, they do not have good field position, but they have got the football. 
Well, we want to remind you, coming up on the deuce, you'll see the State Farm Women's Tip-Off Classic. Sunday at 5 o'clock Eastern will be from Palo Alto. Western Kentucky takes on Connecticut. Huskies trying to reach their second consecutive final four, third rather. They did it last year for the second time. Join in the Women's Tip-Off Classic. Number eight, Western Kentucky, five Connecticut, Sunday at 5 Eastern. Southern Miss will try and move the ball, trailing uh, 30 to 14. We start out here on the 16-yard line, and the running game has been very little of that. Errol Shaw may pick up a yard. Mike Adamley. Well, Gary Nerada looks like Houston's on the verge of gaining at least a share of the Conference USA title. Here, quarterback Chuck Clement, touchdown pass to Scott Reginball to cap a nine-play, 74-yard drive. Cougars lead 38-7, 122 left in the third. And a Liberty Bowl bid, Mike. Well, what that means is that either Houston or East Carolina will wind up getting the bid to play against the fourth team out of the Big East. Second down and the 10 here. Roberts looking very deep at midfield and overthrown, incomplete. He was after Sherrod Gideon out there, but he was covered. Well, and that's the adjustment for Southern Miss. When you have Florida State sitting on the slant and the quick routes, you got to go deep and make them loosen up. And so now they're trying to throw the ball down the field to loosen up the Florida State defense. Balls from the sideline. It doesn't do any good if you don't hit them, though. Yep. you got to hit that big one. This quarter for Southern Miss, eight plays, minus one. I think that means the Florida State defense is getting into a groove. They have pretty much been in it in this game. Third down and ten. And a big rush put on. He gets spun around and knocked down. At the 10-yard line, Peter Bulware, the big junior defensive end, came in. That is the fourth sack for the Seminoles tonight. Well, and Bulware just has this competition with Reinhard Wilson, his teammate. Who can get the most sacks? Well, he gets in there this time, gets all the credit for it. He's the one who beats his man. He is so quick. He runs about a 4'6", and that's where a big man is 255 pounds. There you see Bolware with the two sacks tonight. He set a new Florida mark for sacks in a season, and on the history of this great college football team, Wilson came into this game leading in sacks. Bolware going by him, and that one fumbled. It's still loose at the 50-yard line. It's loose at the 40-yard line. The Seminoles on the football D feaster. The turnovers in this game have mattered. And Jeff Bauer really wanted that one. Feaster just knocked that ball down. It looked like he closed his hand just as the ball was coming to him a little bit early. Well, he hustles to get back on it, but that would have been a huge turnover for Southern Miss. Jamal Alexander being helped off the field. There's one of those of what might have been. Uh, Jeff Bauer's just shaking his head. That close to getting the ball at midfield would have been the best field position here in the third quarter, but it's not. So the Seminoles take over again, first down and 10. They are at their own 39-yard line. First and 10, and uh, they'll be working out of that shotgun again. He has long to go deep in this game and almost intercepted. It'll be an incomplete pass. Samari Roll moved up almost. Yeah, and with every mistake that Thad Busby makes, the fans here get restless. They get a little bit nervous, not because of this ball game, but because they're thinking about Florida as well as Bobby Bowden. They're thinking, we can't make these kinds of mistakes against Florida. There you see number two, Nikki Seymour, all over that pass. Almost pulls the intended. Four straight incomplete passes now for Busby in this game. And this one uh, was going to be overthrown down at the 30. I'm a bit surprised here, instead of trying to eat up a little of this quad, that uh, the Seminoles continue to throw the long ball. Yeah, well, it's the Florida State way. Yeah. You know, they, they want to get this man comfortable. You see his numbers, 16 out of 27, the two interceptions. Even though he's thrown for 225 yards, he, he hasn't really been in a good rhythm except for one stretch earlier. And I think that they're thinking he's got to play better for them to win the national title. And that's what they're after, ultimately, obviously. They want his confidence at a much higher level, so they're throwing the ball. It'll bring up a third down and a 10. Ball still at the 7-0, 39-yard line. They slot it to the near side. 
Busby goes to the weak side or tried and had it deflected. And it'll bring up another fourth down. Good rush put on that time. Southern Miss, Robert Brown, a defensive tackle moving in. Well, Southern Miss defensively, they've done their job in the second half. Again, good pressure. They're bringing more pressure from different areas. This time, you see that Busby, once again, has thrown another incompletion. This one knocked down. That six straight incompletions, Gary. So they do not move it. And uh, Kendrick Lee will uh, be back. It'll be punted for the 25-yard line. This back there has not been right. We'll take the bouncing kick, hoping for no return. It's handled at about the 17-yard line and down at about the 14. May have gone backwards. Melvin Pearsall moved up on the coverage. So Southern Miss will try it again. 44-yard kick and a minus one on the return. Rivalry weekend continues on the new Saturday beginning at noon and 9 Pacific. West Virginia against Virginia Tech will kick it off. Then at 5.30 Eastern, South Carolina against Clemson, followed at 8.30 by Iowa and Minnesota. Rivalry weekend, starting on the deuce at noon. Glad they built that dome in Minneapolis. It's very warm, man. very warm. Harold Shaw will be the setback here. Again, deep in their own territory at the 17-yard line. Lee looking, and that'll be thrown incomplete on the button hook on the far side. Really not very close over there to Kendrick Lee. Well, pressure that a defense can put on you, speed, makes you throw the ball a little bit faster. He threw that ball before his receiver was able to make the cut, and he threw it hard so that when his, 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 his receiver turned around, the ball was almost past him. Roberts is now 0 for 5 in this quarter. Both these quarterbacks here in the second half Struggling a little on passing game. Yeah, playing against a pretty good defensive play in the second half. We'll bring up the second down and the 10. All the possessions here in this quarter for the Mississippi have come very deep. Flank was open this side uh, for Harold Shaw. He'll be driven out of bounds shy of the first down, though. Let's check in with Mike. Mike Adamley. Well, out in Boulder, Colorado, Kansas State trailing 12 0 and in the red zone, but watch their quarterback, Brian Kavanaugh. He is in the twilight zone after getting planted by Ryan Olson. K-State still trails by 12. Colorado playing tough D. Wow, and they do play pretty good defense at Colorado. Not bad at Florida State either. Beating up quarterbacks. Another third down. Todd Pinkinson has come in along Eddie Shaw's in the backfield. Pinkinson set up wide to the other side. Pinkinson cutting in. Bounces up in the air. It'll be incomplete. Well, and you saw the coverage. The slant route is no longer there for Southern Mississippi. I mean, Florida State is all over that. They're sitting for it. Look at them. They're just stopping five yards deep. They're thinking, slant route, my foot. You want to throw the ball? Go deeper. Byron Capers was there. They are right on the receiver. Yeah, they're just sitting there waiting for it. Almost picked off that time. Probably should have been. So, another punting situation as these teams continue to exchange punts. Peter Ward back at the 40-yard uh, line. Gabriel has done the kicking and is out there for a Southern Miss. See if the rush is put on by the Seminoles. And the fifth and incomplete bad pass. The Seminoles will great, get great field position. T.J. Slaughter, the intended here on the pass, but it was bounced. Oh, and he had him there. Food Florida State. They had the man wide open, weren't able to complete the pass. The punter rushed himself. Jack Gabriel rushed himself when he probably didn't have to. He had his man, T.J. Slaughter, out there. Look at him. A little bit nervous, a little excited. Just doesn't get it out there. Had no feet on the ground when he threw that pass. Just never got any kind of balance. So... Fourth down, they do not convert, and a first and a ten for the Seminoles, and they are deep in Southern Miss territory. They'll work out of the eye formation here, with gun in the backfield over the 20 and up to about the 16-yard line. The hitting goes on well after the whistle here. The trio Pollard came up, put the hit on. Well, and this is the dangerous part of the game now. Warwick Dunn can just take you apart. Here you see he's tied the record for 46 touchdowns at Florida State with Greg Allen. But he can pop one on you, and it will demoralize the defense if he gets the ball and breaks one. Yep. 
Two touchdowns, a four-yard run in the first, and he's had the 15-yard run here in this period. A second down and a three. And again, they'll go up the middle looking for the first down, shy of the 15, and probably shy of the first down. Done again. Warwick done again on the carry. It'll be close. Cedric Walthaw came up with a hit. Jason Hall, number 92, is over there to finish him off. And, and you need that because one guy will have a tough time trying to tackle Warwick Dunn by himself. And it'll, it was not enough for a first down. Well shy of that. Ball spotted at the 16-yard line. It'll be a third down and three. And it goes straight up the middle, and that will be uh, close to a first down. Looks like a yard shy. Bear Williams. Started out carrying the ball a lot. Has not carried a lot here after the first quarter. We've got a flag down on the play, and it'll go against the Seminoles on the hold. A break for Southern Miss. Hubert Williams carried the ball enough last season, however, to score 12 touchdowns. Hasn't had that opportunity yet this year. It was a third down and three situation. Holding, offense, 10 yards, with pizza down. Well, they will repeat third down. It'll be third down and 13 this time. Well, it's important for Southern Miss to think about making a play defensively. It's not enough to simply hold Florida State. They need to push them back or create a turnover. They need to do something to give their offense some life here. Big third down play for the Seminoles to try and get the football back. They spread it out. Look at the defensive line. There isn't one. Yeah, look at the gap in the middle of the field. They're giving in the middle. Third down and 13 out of the shotgun. They go to a short man up, and that'll be enough inside the 10 for the first down. Ward Dunn. The snap came directly to Dunn. Their shot Kenny put the hit on, or he would have been gone for his third TD. Yeah, well, you know, they gave him the middle of the field, and Florida State took it. And when you give Ward Dunn this much room, and you give him a couple blocks, you're in big trouble. Look at that gap there, and there's the blocking, and now Ward Dunn is in the middle of your defense, and nobody is in a position to put a hat on him. That's asking for trouble. And uh, it is a first down. They convert on the third. So uh, Dunn has rushed for 69 yards now in 10 carries with two touchdowns. Green split out wide to the right side. Poles over there. The pass, a dangerous one, will be incomplete. That was out there in the flat area where it looked like Slaughter might pick it off. Yeah, had T.J. Slaughter simply looked back at the quarterback, he would have picked that ball off and would have gone 80 yards for a touchdown. Watch the right side of your screen. Busby's just going to lay this one out there, and T.J. Slaughter will show up now. He, had he been looking, he could have picked that one off. Hubert mm -mm -mm. Williams, the intended receiver. So seven incomplete passes in a row have been thrown now by Thad Busby. The Seminoles with a second down. They are deep here at the eight-yard line. Second and goal from the eight. And that may be a loss uh, back to the nine-yard line by Warwick Dunn, who had no room. Marshawn Kenny, their leading tackler again on the play. Uh, There's almost an automatic adjustment for Southern Miss. I formation inside the 10, blitz right up the middle because Florida State likes to run Warwick Dunn on the tall sweep. They knew it, they expected it, they ran the right blitz to pick it up. Well, they will bring in the wide receivers here as Mensman comes on. John Thompson is telling his guys, look for the fade route. Be, a, be concerned about the ball thrown to the corner of the end zone. Third and goal. Ball is at the nine-yard line. That was the in the pocket. Near side, open, incomplete. It was underthrown to Peter Warwick. He was wide open. Yeah, underthrown, but Warwick has got to help Busby. He's got to make that catch. Now, Thad didn't give him the best ball in the world, but he's got to make this catch. Look at it, right here, there's Warwick. He's got a chance to make it. It flips, skips into him. He's got to try to come up with it, but Busby certainly put him in a bad position. Had he just put the ball on the line, it would have been a touchdown. So they'll go for the field goal here. Scott Bentley will try for a 27-yarder. Bentley has gone 12 for 19 in the field goal department. Dead ball, all start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Add five more to the field goal try. 
30 to 14. The Seminoles on top, unable to convert on that drive. A 32-yard field goal attempt here. And uh, got his foot into that one. That is through the uprights. So Bentley puts one through and will add three more. And uh, Florida State extends their lead to 33-14. You know, when Scott Bentley came to Florida State, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated before he ever suited up for a game here. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on him to be the guy to correct the, the wide right situations when Florida State couldn't win the national title by missing field goals. Well, he came in, went through a slump, had some off-field problems, and has come back to be one of the top kickers ever in the ACC. 302 points. Adding to it here. He is now 13 for 15. Correct myself on the field goal numbers that he has. 13 for 15 on the year for him. Yeah, yeah, the other thing that I like about him is that he was about 170 pounds when he came here. He hit the weight. He's about 200, 205 now. He's a big kicker now who can tackle. A two-way player. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't necessarily want that to happen, but it does. The Seminoles trying to remain undefeated as they are... 8-0, 7-0 in the ACC. They're trying to wrap up a number one in the ACC, keep their hopes alive for number one nationally. And then your Bobby Bowden now is wearing the headset. Is he calling plays now? He told us he wouldn't do that. He's got the headset on now. Maybe just chatting. <laughs> Not likely, however. 442 left to go here in the third. Chatting with that man, Mark Rich, who calls the plays now. And then it's Florida State for a long, long time, 11 years, and he's actually a graduate of the University of Miami, one of the hated rivals for Florida State. Bobby Bowden in his 21st season, only Joe Paterno among the after coaches has picked up more wins. And he's looking for another one here. Center Clay. Kevin this deep, and that's in the end zone. He had one foot in. Does get it up to the 20 and up to the 24-yard line. And Southern Miss will take over their first and the 10. The National Championship Trophy. They won it the only time, 1993. You're a coach and you're Bobby Bowden. Just how many times do you want to win this trophy is once enough? People used to tell me, uh, you know, that when I had never won, been on a national championship team, uh, uh, I think a lot of people thought I'd just retire after that. I mean, that's all you 60 something years of age. Well, and, 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 but it's just like I thought. If you win one, you want two. You know, nothing is satisfying. I don't, if you had a million dollars, you'd want two million. If you had three, you'd want four. If we won, if we won two national champions, I'd want a third one, you know, as long as you're in it. So, what does it do when you win one? It makes you one million. I don't know. If I got a million, <laughs> what you want to? I, I might be content. <laughs> <laughs> if I got two, I think, you know, two would might be the mark where. <laughs> But uh, that's the way you have to feel if you're going to be involved in sports in your life. Uh, I guess that's why you we're You've got to want to win, right? <laughs> yeah. Got to want to win. Todd Pinkston on the reception, the freshman. It is a first down, a gain of 18. Uh, Lee Roberts, the completion. Lee Roberts gets out of his funk and throwing the football. Two-man eye. They split it to the right side. Goes straight up the middle and nowhere to go. Tyrone Bowl, where the junior fullback on the carry brought down by Daryl Bush. You know, Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator for Florida State, told us yesterday that the single most important thing they did in the offseason was stress that they needed to rededicate themselves defensively here. That the offense had carried the team last year and that Florida State didn't play good defense last year. Well, they're playing pretty good defense this year. He said that they're more aggressive and they're certainly much more or better team chemistry. Magnificent defense has been played this season and in this game. They've got a 33-14 lead. It'll be a second down and a 10. Harold Shaw, the lone setback big rushes on by the ends and they squeeze it and get it done again right down back near the 35 peter bowler one of those bookends moving in again well you can take your pick close your eyes and say either 58 peter bowler or 55 reinard wilson they're both always racing to get to the quarterback that time bowler got there you know and when you're six five six three and you want to run about a 4.5, 4, 6, 40, and weight 250, you think maybe you have an agent or two who'd like to be your representative? Can't keep them out of there. Just cannot keep them out. And they squeeze it shut. 
and the, compact the offensive territory so quickly. Rod Gideon split out wide left side. Again, the big rush on. They throw underneath the coverage up to the 40-yard line. And a gain of a couple on the carry by Harold Shaw coming out of the backfield. Yeah, well, you know, the thing that makes such a, de a difference on defense is speed. If you have guys that can run, you can shut down or constrict the field. Now watch how quickly you see the Florida State players close on this. And how many? Count them. One, two, three, four, five guys get in on the tackle. I mean, that's team football. That's great speed. Bush was there. Crawford was there. And uh, Gabriel comes back out to punt here. It's a fourth down and uh, ten. Peter Warwick will be deep for the Seminoles. He'll be standing back at about his own 20-yard line for the Gabriel kick. Angle to the far sideline, and he'll take a Seminole bounce. And will be down at about the 33-yard line. 25-yard punt. And the Seminoles on top, 33 to 14. Knowles will take over here, first down and 10. He may not need the headset on anymore. ESPN2's coverage of boxing tomorrow at 9.30. Here on the Deuce, it'll be for the vacant WBF Junior Middleweight Intercontinental Championship from Bristol, Connecticut, Charles Bam Bam Whitaker against Chris Rosie Rosenbaum. You'll see it, that's tomorrow at 9.30. Southern Miss with their D back out there. Here's the reverse, and that's going nowhere. Back at about the 21-yard line, the reverse. Robert Brown read it. Peter Warwick, the carrier, just barely got the football. Yeah, and Robert Brown is in the middle of your screen. He's the nose guard. He played off, came up, went right to the reverse. Didn't get fooled at all. Heck of a play. It'll be a loss of a 10, a loss of 9 on that. And we'll bring up the second down and 19. First time uh, we've seen that. So that's a one play game, uh, generally. Wide receivers both ways. Down in the backfield, they fake to him. They'll be looking to the wide side, up to the 30, 35, 40. Midfield and over it, still on his feet at the 40. The 30, the 20. Warren down. for a career touchdown. Oh, is he something special? 78 yards. And 78 beautiful yards. I mean, he showed you a little bit of quickness, a little bit of speed, and his great vision, his ability to change direction and read block. A tremendous run. Todd Fordham helping out with the blocking. Downfield, extra point, he is up and good. And Dunn has three touchdowns in this game, the number he needed to set that new mark. And Florida State, number three in the nation, a 40-14 lead. Well, look at the blitz coming up the middle. That's what they're thinking. Let's put pressure on and watch Ward Dunn slip outside for the screen. The blocking is set up for him. Now he's in open space. When you're in open space with Ward Dunn, you're at his mercy. Watch the cut back here. He sees it. He makes two guys miss. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. Nicky Seymour shows good speed. But Ward Dunn was part of the ACC top 4x100, 4x400 meter team. You see why? Yep, he can run. What great moves. So a very special night again for Warwick Dunn. And you know, Bobby Bowden almost didn't get Warwick Dunn. When he was in high school, they went to, hey, Macarena, <laughs> what we got here? <laughs> a little dancing going on when you're up, okay. But Warwick Dunn was the quarterback in high school, running the option, and Florida State was looking at one of the running backs. And they happened to see him and say, we like the kid, let's recruit him as a defensive back. He's gone over 900 yards. He's looking for his third season with a thousand yard game. He's gonna get it, they got two more games left. And the Seminole fans on their feet here as their teams opened it up. Well, uh, he is truly a difference maker. Kendrick Lee, back at the five yard line. 20, 25, and they're driven out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. 
The coach, Bobby Bowden, liked having this guy around. He comes in here as an unknown freshman. We actually signed him as a defensive back, show you how brilliant we are. You know, so but once he got that ball on his arm, you could tell he needs to be a ball carrier. His first year, he scores 10 touchdowns as a freshman. And we won the national championship, some outstanding players. But I think we would not have won it without his contribution, you know. Now, since that time, gee whiz, at 175 or 78 pounds, here's a guy trying to gain 1,000 yards three years in a row. You know, we've never had one in Florida State to do it over once. He's already done it twice. He's trying to become a three-year man. Bobby Bowden talking about those three years of 1,000 yards. Harold Shaw, the carrier, brought down here. How high will he go uh, when he looks to the National Football League? Well, he's rated highly by all the scouts. He's got great hands, great speed, great vision, all the instinctive things you look for. The one question is obviously his size. Well, I don't think that's going to be a question mark for him when you look at what, what's happened before. Guys his size have been drafted in the second round, the first round. I see him as a first-round pick because he can open up a game for him. Let him down at 11 here. Southern Mississippi. Final game of the season. Seeing their hopes at any kind of a bowl bit going by as we've completed three quarters. And this tough Seminoles team ranked third in the country. Led by Warwick Dunn as a 40 to 14 lead. Size 21. 